My name is Farron Convey, I'm a project manager at Head Partnership and today I'm here representing Leeds Manufacturing Festival. Leeds Manufacturing Festival has been set up by manufacturers that are based in Leeds for one specific reason, to inform young people in Leeds, i.e. you, about manufacturing, which is why myself and the panel are here to talk to you today. Our panellists, you're going to get a chance in a few minutes to ask them some questions, so have a little think about what you might want to ask them. To begin with, they're going to introduce themselves, and Cameron's going to start by introducing himself, who he works for, what his job role is, and he's also going to tell us all what manufacturing is. Hi, I'm Cameron Finder. I work at Kirksell Precision, and we make medical instruments and implants. So for surgeries, it's a lot for healthcare. Now... Manufacturing, a lot of you might not know what it is, but generally, the simple term is it's making things. Everything in this room was made by someone somewhere. Commonly, you might think it's a dirty job, it's a traditional job, it's a factory, long hours, but manufacturing itself is an industry. So you can work in an office, you can work with your hands, and you can do a split of both. There's a lot of opportunity to choose what you think you're good at, and I think they'll give you that place in the industry. Good morning, everyone. My name's James Ma, and I work for a company called NPM in Pudsey, and we're a fiberglass manufacturing company. Um, I'm a logistics team leader there, so all the products we produce, I ship out to customers. Hi, everyone. I'm Seth. I'm a marketing manager for a company called E3 Recruitment. We don't manufacture anything, but what we do is recruit talent into the manufacturing and engineering sectors across the UK. Morning everyone, I'm Tom Hudson. I'm a tendering engineer at Schneider Electric and I help customers find solutions for their problems. And uh, my name's Andy Boucher. I work for uh, the UK's largest dairy company, dairy manufacturer called Arla Foods. And I work in the commercial sales function at head office in Leeds. So that's your panel. Thank you all very much for coming along. Thank you to E3 Recruitment, Leeds City College and Next Gen Makers who are sponsoring the festival this year. They're making this happen today. So Cameron mentioned industry. So if we think of all of the different types of industries or sectors in the UK, we think of them as an orange. If we slice that orange up, manufacturing makes quite a large part of um, that whole. So about 12% of gross domestic product, so that's all of the money that's made by businesses in the UK, is made by manufacturers. So that's quite a lot. So you might be saying, well, Farron, why is that of interest to me? And the reason is that over one in 10 people are employed in manufacturing. So at least 10% of you in the future are going to be working in manufacturing, maybe with some of the people on stage. And that's why the festival is set up, because manufacturers in this region want people like you, talented young people, to come and join them in maybe four, five, six, seven years time, perhaps after that. So they want to tell you about the sector. It's a growing sector. There are other growing sectors in this region. Construction's growing, digital is growing. There are gonna be lots of opportunities for you. And that's why we're here to talk to you today and to give you a chance to find out more and find out, is it right for you? Are the jobs with these employers and other manufacturers right for you. What I can tell you is that on average, manufacturing is quite well paid. In silence, can you put your hand up if you're money motivated, if you want to earn lots of money? Okay, good. So this is a would you rather, so I've got two questions for you. So the first one is, when you start working, do you want to live and work locally or do you want to live and work far away? So if you want to live and work locally, put your hands up, please, now. It's a good region. Not many of you want to live and work around here. Okay, we're going to need to, ins we're going to, need to inspire them. We've got a hard job here. Okay, who wants to get a job and go and live and work somewhere further away? Okay, this is good. I think the rest of you that didn't put your hands up, we're going to need to inspire you that work's a good thing because it can help you get great jobs locally and great jobs abroad as well. So some of these companies 
if you start working with them here, you could end up going and working in Australia or South America or North America or anywhere around the world. So with this one, this is another would you rather. Would you rather work in a job that you love, but it's not that well paid? Teachers, I want you to put your hands up for this one as well. Or do you want to earn lots of money and you're not bothered if you hate it? So if you want a job that you really love and you're not so bothered about whether you get well paid, put your hands up. See what the panel, are. Oh, all of the panel have got their hands up. That is interesting. And most of the teachers, which doesn't surprise me at all. So who's money motivated? Who doesn't care if they hate their job but just wants to earn loads of money and have a big house and drive really fast cars? When I was younger, my hand would have, been the, would have gone up for the last one. I've had a higher paid job. But now I really love my job. I don't get so well paid. But I totally get where you're coming from. The good thing is manufacturing can help you with both of those. You can actually get a job that is well paid and that you actually love. So we've got an opportunity. We've got five people who've taken times out of their busy day job to come and listen to your questions and answer them honestly. So who has a question they want to ask to our panel? So obviously it depends on the type of role that you're going into in manufacturing and there's so many different departments and disciplines as well and you can become very specialist in it or you can lead teams in it and each kind of journey through that leads to different sorts of salaries. We work with our clients a lot of the time doing something called salary benchmarking where we'll tell them if they're paying enough or if they're not paying enough um, but you know an entry level role into manufacturing after your apprenticeship is upwards of 26,000. Um, obviously, it's very dependent on the company size as well. So, if you're working for a global manufacturer, it can be a little bit more, but then it's always weighing up the kind of pros and cons of working for a global company or a small, uh, medium enterprise. You know, you've got kind of work life balance, additional benefits, it's the culture. Um, so when you're choosing a job in manufacturing, you're not just choosing it for the salary, you are choosing it for the life that it's going to give you and the skills that it's going to give you, the friendships even as well. There's a couple of big dogs in manufacturing, so aerospace, massive payer, um, the chemical industry, huge payer. Um, apprenticeships in chemical and aerospace are typically the highest paying out of all of the different sectors. Um, however, what I would say is each of these sectors, in, in this region, for example, so aerospace is a high paying sector, but we've got no companies in Leeds who build aeroplanes. We've got companies that build the components and that are parts of aeroplanes. So if you're wanting to start a career, look at what's around you and look at the opportunities that are around you and you will, if you work hard enough at it, you will earn a salary that's representative of the hard work that you've put in as well, regardless of sector that you're in. Um, but they're all really great opportunities um, to work in any of these sectors. There's some really, really popular areas of manufacturing, um, but there's always going to be opportunities. You know, it's the, one of the backbones of this country and there's always going to be jobs and opportunities in it. And it's just really important that we keep people in manufacturing in this country as well so that we don't have to move any of our manufacturing facilities or sectors to different countries like we need manufacturing to keep this country going. I'm based in head office so I'm, I'm contracted to 37 and a half hours a week that's usually half eight till five but since the pandemic we've become a lot more flexible so we can work from home so we can flex our hours a little bit so generally 37 and a half but we have opportunity to work from home and in the office if we want to. I'm also very similar so um, since the pandemic we also do um, flexi hours so I work two days in the office three days at home I work uh, 37 and a half hours that's what I'm contracted for um, occasionally you do more but that's okay. I'm pretty similar I work five days in the office sometimes I can work from home depends on how busy I am uh, but 37 and a half hours but majority of the roles that we recruit for you're either like working day shifts night shifts um four days a week three days a week if it's a, you know a huge shift that you're working on um but it's always dependent on the type of role that you want into working so we do 38 hours a week which is monday to thursday 
So you start early in the morning at half six and finish at half four, but you do get a long weekend. Again, there's always overtime available on a Friday if you want. So you can go in and earn extra money. It depends what you want, work-life balance. If you want some extra cash or you want a long weekend, it's, it's up to you. So I work Monday to Thursday, eight hours a day, and that's starting at seven. And then on the Friday, we go to college. So because I'm in an apprenticeship, you study at college as part of your qualification. Um, we started on two days a week, so it was a lot easier. I came from never having a job before that. So going from school to then full-time work in it, it's a massive leap. And some of you might work in it and you, you know how much effort that takes. And to transition to full-time, having that two days was a lot easier. It is a change, the working world, to what education is now. But apprenticeships really do blend it and they have an understanding that you are coming from school and that you may not have ever worked fully in your entire life. So an apprenticeship generally, a company will hire you and train you to fit their role while sending you to college. So you're still in school, but you're still working. So they'll split it to however they will. And it even goes up to degree level. So you can do a, an apprenticeship and still get funded to a master's degree. So you get zero debt and you've got all that experience. So I think a lot of people come out of university and they might not have worked in the industry they're trying to get into. In an apprenticeship, you can. And a lot of yeah, companies that offer these degree apprenticeships, you do need A-levels. Um, so that's something to look into if you are looking to get a degree. But if you haven't, I never got A-levels. So I came out and I went to college for a year and started my apprenticeship. So I started earning money. And then once you do, generally they're about three to four years and you finish that and my company will fund HNC, which is one below a foundation degree. And then they do HND. So that is a degree level qualification. So you'll find apprenticeships, uh, generally 16 they start, but you can get an apprenticeship whatever age you are now. So if you're looking to earn and get a qualification and even progress in the company, apprenticeships are a really good way to do it. I think for, for apprenticeships, some it's quite interesting with it. So you will have the national apprentice wage. That's what legally you have to get paid as a starting salary. Generally, they'll have a scheme, so each year it will go up. If you do well, that will obviously increase more. Um, after you've done your first year, if you're over 19, you're then in, entitled to the national minimum wage for everyone over, like, 18. So generally, once you turn 18, you're working a full-time job that isn't an apprenticeship. You are entitled to that wage, so that is quite high now. That's going up in April to, I think it's £11.44 or something around there. And that's a lot of money now. So I think apprenticeships, bear in mind you're earning, you could start at 16. You might earn a thousand pound a month. And at 16, it's a lot of money. You don't know what to do with it. So as that progresses, by the time you're 18, you're on 20, even higher. So I think it's really good for your age, how much you're earning. It really depends on what kind of job you're looking to get. Now, obviously, for most jobs, if not all, you will need to get, I believe it's a four now. It was still the actual letter grades when I was in school, which ages me. But you'll need to achieve a minimum four in maths and English, I believe. And then usually if you're looking for a job in kind of engineering, in in any of kind of the manufacturing sectors, it's really helpful to have some of the science grades as well. Those are a big help, so kind of physics. I know that some of the college courses, you can actually do manufacturing itself anyway, so that's a good one to aim for if you're looking to move into the industry. So getting the good grades is important, but it's not the only thing to think about. Yeah, so we, we get uh, 26 days, just standard holiday leave, and then we get bank holidays off. Um, do that and then if in certain uh, departments if you if you uh, work overtime you can accrue days in lieu which are additional holiday days to take and things so we do quite well in terms of the, ho the holidays um, so yeah so 26 days and then we have all the bank holidays so it works out quite a lot through through the year as well 
you'll tend to find as you move forward that degrees are not the only option for moving into manufacturing. I myself did aerospace engineering, so I now work in the industrial electricals field, which is obviously quite different. But you'll find a lot of the degrees that kind of come into play have transferable skills. So some of my colleagues that work at Schneider, they did geography at university. There are others that did physics. There are others that did kind of English literature. And it all kind of develops the skills that you need to enter the workforce, depending on what kind of role you're looking for. So if you're looking for more of a technical role, then more of a technical degree or qualification, such as an apprenticeship, would help. But it's not the only route in. There's so many different disciplines and skills that are needed across manufacturing. So there's your engineers, there's your sales team like Andy from Arla. Um, you've got your tendering engineers like Tom, who has studied engineering at some point. Um, there's so many different routes into it, that into different disciplines as well. So it's always very much based on what do you, what are, you, what are your instincts, like what skills have you got at the moment? that you feel you can grow through doing specific subjects. Um, for GCSEs to get into manufacturing or engineering, definitely pick an additional science, GCSE, um, you know, chemistry, physics. And then as you go through college, it all gets a bit more specific when you pick in your courses as well. And then if you go to university, you specialize in a certain area. If you're doing an apprenticeship, you do get the opportunity to specialize in a certain area but learn a little bit more about the business as well and start working earlier on than if you do choose a degree. It's not that I don't like it, it's the, it's the industry I work in is a, is a messy industry. Um, it's very hands-on, you know, working with fiberglass and stuff like that and resins and other chemicals, you, you know, you do get covered in it. If it could be a lot cleaner, that would be only my, my sort of thing that I don't like. But other than that, I'd stay there all day and night if I could. I think I just wanted to tack on that um, even if you're in a job that you love, it's the job that you want to have for life, there is always going to be something that it, like, you don't like about it. There's always going to be something which just isn't your favourite part about the job. So I think it's, I just wanted to tack on that that's always something good to remember. Like Even if it's a job that you, you, know, you could be there all day and night, it's just important to remember there's always going to be something which just isn't quite right about it. found certain aspects, certain bits that I, that I loved of it and certain aspects that I, I, did, I did find boring, if I'm honest. But I think what I did is I tried to focus on those other moments. And we mentioned earlier about the different parts of your job and stuff, some bits you don't like and some bits you do. And I think it's just weighing that up. So predominantly, I loved a lot more than I found boring. So um, yeah, so there are elements. And again, in, in my role in, in my job, there's certain elements that I, that I don't enjoy, but they, they're outweighed by a lot of the elements that I do enjoy. Oh, it'll massively stand out. I think anything like that that you can put on your CV, especially when you've got no work experience, just helps you stand out as the, the prime candidate for that job. Um, as you guys start your careers, you're not going to have much to put on your CV, but having stuff like volunteering, sports, um, any additional skills that you've learned throughout your years in school, any kind of um, internships as well or work placements. There's a lot of manufacturers out there, and especially in Leeds that I've worked with, that you know they're really interested in getting young people into the doors and giving them site tours. I mean, we do that through Leeds Manufacturing Festival. Uh, where we match schools that were manufacturers and you know you can go on site tours and the more you do stuff like that the more you stand out to any kind of employer in the workplace in in the future yeah so so Isla are a global company with the fourth largest dairy manufacturer in the world so that means we've just got offices sites everywhere so Based in, I've been based in Leeds for the last 17 years, but I've travelled all around the UK to our sites, uh, Denmark, Poland, Sweden, Latvia, uh, Dubai, um, Australia. There's, I think there's a few more, but yeah. So we did, yeah, there's, we, we get opportunities really to, to travel and, and, and also opportunities to apply for jobs in other countries as well. So the great thing about working for a global company 
is there's opportunities. If you do, a lot of people put their hands up about moving away. There's opportunities to, to do that from, from the local area as well. So my degree took five years, but that's because I did, um, I did an MEng, which is an integrated master's degree with a year in industry. So that was four years in uni and then one year in a company working. Typically, your bachelor's is going to be about three years. And then if you choose to do a master's, it will be another year or two on top of that. No, so I, I work in sales now. So um, basically, my job role is to sell our products into Asda. So that's my, my local customer. Um, but now, actually, I wanted to join the army when, when I was at school. I didn't want to go to university. I didn't go to university. I went to, did my GCSEs because I wanted to get, um, get those as a base level. Uh, went to college. Um, but I did really random subjects that don't link to what I'm doing now. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do um, at that point. So I worked through various different jobs until I found Arla at the age of 25 and then moved into Arla and then found what I wanted to do. So it definitely wasn't my, my first choice when I was younger in terms of what I wanted to do, but definitely the job that I found now is, yeah, I found it after a few years, but I, I absolutely love it now. Digital skills are very important, especially like in this day and age, especially because nowadays, it was said in the previous panel by Cameron, I believe, that 50 years ago, manufacturing was a completely different game to what it is now. And nowadays we use a lot more technology. Everything is moving towards being automated, which means we need people to help with that automation to make sure that everything's running correctly. We have a lot more importance with coding and with various other aspects of that, usually when it comes to digitalization of a lot of older systems. Years ago, digital wasn't even a thing in, within our, and now we've got a, a team of nearly 30, 35 people who focus purely on digital, so that's around digital marketing and everything to do with digital, basically. So how can we push our products out to people? So everybody has pretty much got a mobile phone, so there's lots of opportunities for us to drive through social media through websites, through everything, our products and get messaging out around why people should buy our products. So it's become massive for our business and just keeps keeps getting bigger and bigger. So we're, we're branching out digitally massively now in the UK. Yeah, I think just being in food manufacturing, um, Arla is a company that are owned by farmers. So we have 13,000 farmers globally. Um, one of the biggest contributions of methane emissions is actually cows. So cow farts, basically. So we work very closely from the, the farm side, how we can reduce emissions. So we, um, we have our farmers sign up to certain uh, systems that allow us to track what their environmental input is on farm, and they get paid more money if they're more sustainable. They get paid less money if they're less sustainable. Then that filters all the way through to kind of manufacturing. So a lot of our um, packaging is 100% recyclable. We're working with how we can reduce like the likes of palm oil content and everything like that. So all the way through to then how we work with um, Asda in terms of promoting sustainability. So we have products that are fully organic, so they don't use any fertilizers, et cetera. So all the way through our manufacturing journey from farm all the way to, to where you take it at home is all, all based on sustainability. And they have some really punchy targets to be net zero by 20, 2050. So we're working to make our sites carbon neutral and that manufacture all the products. So it's a massive, massive area for us and, and is at the forefront of everything we do in terms of the business. So if you're looking to work in a sector where sustainability is one of the most important things and you want to contribute towards that, these are the sort of businesses that you can work for. And these businesses are looking for you to demonstrate the things you've demonstrated to us in the last 45 minutes, like your interpersonal skills, your confidence in public speaking, well done to everyone that asked a question, or that wanted to but didn't get a chance, and who demonstrated active listening, well done for that as well. So I think the panel would like to give you a round of applause, and could you also give the panel a round of applause, please?